Well, Vivi, I mean, I, obviously, we're here to speak about you and your career and being a BAFTA breakthrough. But just, I just want to say, I love Rye Lane so much. I love that film so much. I know that's you've probably heard that quite a lot this year. <laughs> I think I've, I've seen two hundred and sixty films this year, and I still think it's my number one. Oh, uh, dude, so thank far. you. Absolutely loved it. But uh, we'll get into that in a bit later. But I just wanted to ask first about how it feels to be a, a BAFTA breakthrough star. It feels insane. BAFTA is like an organization that I look upon with so much respect and admiration and I associate it with like some of the most incredible talent like of our generation so to be brought into the fold I feel like I've been like brought into the CIA like honestly like um yeah I'm so so grateful and excited who was the who was the first person you told um my publicist because <laughs> like because she needs she needs to sign an nda <laughs> i haven't actually told anyone so well, it's yeah. like being the cia is that way uh, yeah yeah exactly. yeah <laughs> um let's see i was going to ask about because i've got a couple of cousins who are kind of getting into acting and stuff i wondered if kind of sort of recognition accolades of this kind of nature validate the kind of work because i've known you know like my cousins who are actors and stuff it's it's such a precarious and very volatile industry and it seems the early years are spent with so much kind of anxiety but when you get kind of moments like this when you find out you're kind of being recognized by a company like bafta does it make you feel like everything's kind of been worth it it makes you feel like okay I, i'm on the right track um it's it's so, especially because I haven't had the experience, it's so hard to like quantify what it what it is, but it just feels like, it feels like not to be a wee-woo type of girl, but just, it feels like seeing 11-11 on the clock. It's like, I'm a line, I'm in the right place, things are good, we're moving. Like, that's how it feels. Um, and then I guess within the experience, you make the most of it and you get the most from what you put in. But um, yeah, to, to be like, I don't know so, so like to have that love shown by people that you admire so much is nuts it feels pretty good yeah do you remember the point when you thought I'm this is it I'm an actor because I, there's no kind of like certificate you don't it's not like when you want to be a, I don't know like a plumber you learn how to like fix pipes you just kind of get roll to roll to roll so I just I just wondered if there was a specific moment or, or character you played that made you realize hang on this isn't a pipe dream or some sort of hobby this is actually my career I think it happened literally this year and like I've been acting for like what, five or six years now um but I think it happened this year like at Sundance when I'm in this like wintry wonderland with this film that I shot hundreds of miles <laughs> across the globe like in Peckham and people American people that have no stakes in the film and also no cultural context for what the film is were like cheering and like jumping out of their seats I was like okay I think this might be a thing like I think I'm doing the thing now. I think I'm an actor now. <laughs> like that's uh, yeah, that's when I felt it for sure. Did, did you always want to be an actor from quite a young age? Were you one of those sort of young children that get your family around, sort of sit on sofas and you perform in front of them? <laughs> my family were lucky to get two words out of me. I didn't speak. My dad, when he came and saw me do a play at the National afterwards, he was like, I can't believe you talk that much. He like, I'm very, very silent. Like, so, it's such a classic actor thing, but like I was super shy as a kid. I used to write poems a lot and I used to write stories with my friend in, in year six we used to take a book home like week on week on week off um but yeah acting was rogue I, I don't know where that came from within me but um yeah I think I probably just found my voice through doing it in school a little bit and was like this is probably something I should lean into but definitely there were no performances taking place in the <laughs> household yeah <laughs> I bet, but with the writing, is that something you'd like to explore further then? I mean, you said you kind of used to write. Is it, is, have you got sort of ambitions to maybe write some more going forward? Yes, return to source, definitely. That's 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 the goal for next year and see. And I've started and I'm just, yeah, just enjoying like getting the ideas on paper right now and then see where it takes me. That's where BAFTA's going to come in. <laughs> Help me make my dreams come true. Yeah. But it's, it's so nice to speak to you after a few months after my lane because as, as you'll know, kind of press tours generally come prior to a film's release so I can actually speak to you about it afterwards and the incredible reception it got I saw it three times in total and the third time I saw it it was like six weeks after it first come out and it was still packed I mean it was a peck and plex yeah. so that, you know it was a local thing but like how was it what does it feel like you like you make this little film you put it out into the world how does it feel for it to have been received in the way that it has been I still don't have words for it like I it's like 
an unimaginable level of warmth like if everyone in the cinema hugged you at once and you're just in the in the center of the hug um but then like the love is flowing through everyone and just to be a part of something that made you so happy everyone who worked on it was so happy to be at work then people watching it are so happy to watch it uh yeah and just it's it's crazy because it feels like people were kind of wanting Peckham as it is right now to be like fossilized and we've captured it in all its color and all the multitudes of it hopefully we're trying to capture some of them and for that to exist it's just like a piece of like something that's like archival is also brilliant to be a part of so yeah I'm just um all is full of love in the words of Bjork because <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a North Londoner but I was living I lived in Peckham for five years I moved um about two months ago so when this film came out I was in the middle of Peckham uh, and stuff and it's sort of so great to see the kind of local area kind of like you said kind of immortalized and come to life do you do you feel you have an affinity now to that part of London since making this film a hundred percent. What was crazy was like two years prior to the film being made, I'd spent so much time in South London, like a lot of loads of my friends were living there. Um, so I created this crazy emotional connection to South London in those years and then ended up doing the film afterwards. So yeah, now like going to Peckham ever since is kind of like whatever the positive version of like, you know, when like you walk over a grave and they're like someone feels something whatever the positive version of that is that's how I feel when I'm walking through Peckham because I'm like this place means so much to me now like yeah are you from North London did you say as well I'm from North London I'm an imposter whereabouts Southern Sisters is where I grew up. Oh, is it? Oh, I live. That's yeah. what I live for the moment. I'm from Kilburn, but I live. I live near Tottenham Hale at the moment. So yeah, I love. I love Tottenham, but y'all don't fight me. I hope I flew the flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask as well, just quick, if you could, if you could tell when you, because uh, I think I think Ray Lane, like as we've sort of established, I'm obviously a big fan. Uh, it's a really special film. Could you tell uh, quite early on that it was going to be quite special? Was it? And was it from early conversations with Rain or when you got the script? Or what, what, what sort of stage do you go hang on a minute we're, we're sitting on something that's quite pretty good like you it's mad because you get the script you're like I obviously love it loads I want to I want to do it then I met Rain and I was like she's incredible I want to work with her met David felt the same and then the wider creative team I was like wow everyone working on this job is brilliant like in a way that like I haven't felt like it, everyone is just so idiosyncratic and has such a clear like artistic point of view and I was like wow what a lovely meeting of minds but that's but the, beyond that you just you actually just never know and you kind of have to detach from outcomes a lot so I was like I'm really proud of the work we've all created and that's it and then I think there was a crew screening that David and I weren't invited to and after that there was a lot of text messages and Bianca Simone the makeup artist was like this film is really special and that is a no-nonsense woman like that was my onset mom she doesn't play so when she said that I was like maybe something's gonna happen here <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've done some behind the scenes work with David before and he's such a gentle lovely soul as well so I think and, and I've not met Rain yet but I'm but yeah. soon I'll complete the the the, the trilogy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, you're, you're surrounded by great names on this BAFTA list. I just it just shows really how strong the film, the British film industry, and obviously US is at the moment. I just wondered if you get the chance to kind of go to the cinema often and keep on top of what everyone's kind of doing. I know you're in the industry, so you're on set quite a lot and stuff. But are you are you are you able to keep your kind of um, on top of all the kind of movies out and TV shows? Hundred yeah. percent. That is my like I, I live like 20 minute walk from a cinema so I'm always in that cinema and even when like I'm filming if I have any time off it's spent in the cinema my computer watching films constantly like director of my last job every couple of days I'd be like to him, oh have you seen this film he'd be like how do you get the time to watch all this and I'm like I will find a way to watch film always I love film um, so I'm going to ask too, because uh, I know I was looking at your IMDb, because obviously that's how I do my research. Mm. Uh, it's hot is listed as your next project. Uh, what can you sort of tell us about that one? And you're kind of in, how's your sort of next two to three years kind of looking? Are you excited about where it's got what's what you've got planned? Yeah, I'm super super excited about what I've got planned. Um, I yeah, obviously Dead Hot is going to come out next year. It's a comedy thriller. Um, and I'm playing opposite Bala Hasna for like a lot of the time, who's incredible. I adore him as a person and as a performer. Um, incredible people like legends like Penelope Wilton and um Peter Serenifowitz, Serenit as well. So that should be great. But 
yeah, just more, 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 more. I'm a maximalist. So just building, building out and fleshing out the multiverse of things that I want to make that are in my head, like actually actualizing them is what the years to come will look like. Just more great stories, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. That was an exciting time. So just stay finally before I go. For those watching this who want to get to know you more, I'm just going to ask the one question that I think is the key to someone's soul and tells me all I ever need to know about them. But what's your favorite meal? You, the emphasis that you've placed on the answer mm. to this question has made me incredibly <laughs> nervous. Um, <sighs> spaghetti bolognese. Absolute classic. Thank God. I was really nervous. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but spaghetti one is cool. Well, it's good to know. Uh, thank you so much, Vivian, for your time today. And best of luck with all you've got going. I'm sure our paths will cross again down the line. I hope so, Stephanie. Cheers. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys.